Welcome. Tonight, I'm excited. This is 1959. This is my year. Yeah. And I see we got a bunch of 59ers here. All right. This was when we were young and beautiful and having a great time looking to see what life had to offer. Such an exciting time. We got to ask Sam. I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, go ahead. It's, gonna, it's your video. <laughs> We're going to ask Hawaii Sam if he would give us an opening prayer. Maybe tonight, but oh, sorry. Just so some of you 59ers know, I was only 12 years old. So can't get over one thing. Let us pray. Lord. Thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat> we also want to thank. Yeah, I do it right there. Is it going to work? Oh, yeah. Okay. We also want to thank the Donald Moore Foundation uh, for their support. This uh, effort is a part of the Lake City Creative Alliance. And of course, the continuum is generously donating in space for us. And obviously, you and your sponsorship and your support of this program is very meaningful. Can you good? Okay, thank you. Uh, tonight we're talking about 1959. And all I can say is I feel sorry for all of you who were not teenagers in 1959. Because it was a wonderful time. Oh, there we go. Do you remember her mistake from the Andy Griffith show? Well, he welcomes you too. Did what? Old man Kelsey's ocean. Oh. When he was trying to get a diploma. Yeah. Want me to tell you the whole story? No. Thank you, son. Kent wants to know if you know how many times Ernest Tick was on the end of the show. As producer, too, or just the this is a trivia question. Just his character. The answer is five. Which equals the number of marriages he had. Five. He got married five times, too. <laughs> Hard to believe, didn't it? Someone in the Hall of Fame. Oh, no. Yep. Here we go. Lake City is being run by the mayor, C.J. Evans, and the council which consists of Edward Roper, uh, Edward Bowen, George Tommy, Jane Potfield, Boyd Meadows, and James Trua. And Miss Alice Carey was the first woman to run for mayor. And I learned the other night that Miss Carey also ran for the House of Representatives. Right. I'm not exactly sure which year, but it was around that same time. He's got a trigger finger in his eye. Itchy finger. There you go. Okay. Now, most of this music 
was the slow dance music in our area, in our era. There were some that was uh, pretty fast, but I don't remember the slow dance because that's the only thing I could do. You could get close. I know it, that was the reason. I never, I never but I want to talk about the movies because I find them really interesting. I did a little bit of this research into these movies and I find quite a bit of interesting uh, information. Most of these people know even if they're not from our particular generations, I would say. But there are some of them up there that probably we missed altogether. For instance, Imitation of Life. Kind of an interesting one for a lot of reasons. It started on the tournament, and a, a lady by the name of Jack, Jackie Brown. Jackie was a black lady who had a child, a daughter, who was mixed race and passed for white. And the whole movie is about that child trying to find her place in society. It's really a heartbreaker because she rejected her mother as a result of her efforts and only came back at the tail end. So we are beginning to have the race discussion in our society at this point. Nun's story was another one. That's Audrey Hepburn, who became a nun because she wanted to go to the Congo to uh, work with uh, the Congolese. But her order kept trying to redirect her and send her places she didn't want to go. And the whole story is about her fighting the structure. And finally, she returns to the Congo as the war breaks out. And when her order uh, sends her to a hospital to care for the Nazi, soldiers and whatnot, is when she has a final uh, episode of rebellion and puts up, hangs up her habit and walks out of the combat. Interesting. And then, of course, there's Borgie and Bess. Borgie and Bess is probably the very first all-black movie. It had one white character in it, which is Claude Aiken. If you remember him, Claude Aiken. Played a detective. But they had people who became real stars. I think I got a few notes on it. Because uh, it had Pearl Bailey, Diane Carroll, Sandy Davis Jr., Sidney Poitier. We had uh, just so many wonderful things. Uh, you remember the music, Summertime? was uh, Diane Carroll, the uh, Sandy. But Sam Davis, uh, I forget the name of the character he played, became the real star of that movie. And Little Abner. Those of us who grew up in that era and before remember the comic strip, Little Abner. Little Abner appeared on Broadway about 1956. Came back and made a movie of it in 1959. It's interesting to me for a lot of reasons, and not the, list, the, uh, the least of which is the cast. We'll see a little bit later on. Daisy May was a lady by the name of Leslie Parrish. Leslie Parrish was a beautiful woman. The only other film of note that she, had, that she started was Manchurian Candidate which was a really dark, dark movie. The, um, Stella Stevens was one of the stars in this movie as well. She played, I almost hesitate to tell you, a passionata von Climax. She was a seductress who was hired to, get, to capture little Abner during the Sadie Hawkins Day race and marry him. Because if you recall, Mary Yoakum had a tree in her yard where she made Yoakumberry tonic. Yoakumberry tonic made people 
beautiful and muscular and healthy. Unfortunately, also kill sex drive. But they wanted to capture the Openberry tree. And the only way they could do it was through a family connection. The other person in the movie was Julie Newmar. I love the title, the name. She was Stupefying Jones. And if you remember Julie Newmar, they chose well. So those were some of the, the movies that came out in that year that I just find to be reaped of one another, a hole in the head. That one starred Frank Sinatra. And that one, if you recall, the, the song that came out of that was, I'm not exactly sure what the title was, but it was The Rubber Tree Plant. Do you remember that song, you know, Ram, Dam, or Dam Ram, or, you know, it, it was an interesting song that lasted way beyond the movie. And were we in a movie in that era? You went to the movie to be scared because they guaranteed you would be frightened. And what did they do? They had the tingler, the perceptor, where they electrified your seat. <laughs> and when he said, scream, scream for your lives, someone turned on the electric seat. <laughs> These cars, I had to talk about a couple of them because they were just so, so novel. First of all, I think we all love them, particularly like the Corvette. Everybody wanted that or a Thunderbird, you know, from that era. But we take any of those cars except for the Irish Shamrock. The Irish Shamrock was a strange car in the sense that two Americans thought that they could do something in Ireland to help the economy, and they thought about starting a car factory. So they raised a lot of money on a building factory. They built 10 of these things and couldn't find anybody that would distribute them. Couldn't find any automobile dealers to handle them. Total production run after all those millions spent was 10 cars. Now, I don't think they'd have sold it anyway, because it had a 53 horsepower engine in it. That's a little more than a scooter. But look at this Cadillac Cyclone. That was a concept car. That's a, you see the plastic bubble uh, over the drivers? But the innovative features in it Two things. One, the exhaust came out the front, in front of the tires. I have no idea. I assume that's to get more dispersal of the fumes. But the other thing is, in the nose cone that you see, they had radar. They actually had radar. It was a collision avoidance detection system way before this time. But, some beautiful cars, and love to have one now. There you go. I have to admit, I thought the fashion of that era was really nice. This is just before Tweety came out, or just around the time that Tweety came out. But Ken didn't know about Tweety and the sack dress, and that uh, fashion, all of these are foreign to you know, characteristic. But I, you probably can't see the price. But down on the bottom, this guy is wearing a linen weave suit, and the price of it, the suit, is $23.50. Now that would be $10 equal, no, $1.50 equals $10. $230? Yeah. Okay. 
This new facility is going in where the park is now. Actually, I'm sorry, the old one was where the park is. I assume this new one is when they moved it out further out of town, but I don't know about that for a fact. And we're into the interstate boom. Which is, no, I'm sorry, there's no one I don't remember this, where they canceled the exams. Do you, any of you remember having to go to Florence to take the exams? I don't either. But valedictorian, salutatorian, the class of 1959. Didn't mind the examples. And I don't really remember this part, but they started a community college within Lake City at $2 entry uh, the fee. It was held at night. There were two classes a night, seven, uh, 6.30 to 7.30, and then I think it was 8 to 9, the classes. No, sorry, 7.30 But we held it at the high school. We'll come back to that, because there's more about that. These are the classes. And you can see who the instructors were. I, mean, I found that really interesting. Dr. Whitehead teaching Bible. Most of them make sense. Matter of fact, I'm teaching ain't on that. How to invest your money, George Daniel. Landscape gardening, I don't remember what's the dabs. Uh, Charles Miller, forestry. Abe Tommy, doing, going to teach you how to take pictures. And Al Wilson, doing everyday law. Household mechanics, Johnny P. Pollock, cooking this, how to hunt. A C, a CPL company representative, Carolina Light and Power. Yeah, see that here. Okay. So in with Miss Tori Lamb and Miss Flanagan. And they said they're going to add other courses as demand appears. Quite an extensive offering for the members of the community. Now, I mean, I, I was in a band. I didn't get selected for this. My feelings only got hurt now. Because I didn't know about it at the time. Well, I don't know why I wasn't selected. Captain Bill. Yeah. It's a game play, and it looks like he only got trumpet, clarinet, trombone, sousaphone. Well, I play those. Look at those beautiful. Yeah, that's it. They didn't have enough uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Look at those uniforms. Those were wool. I remember marching in a parade in July in Lake City and sweating through my shirt. And at the end of the parade, my white shirt was yellow from those uniforms. These are, then Tommy organized a, a, a program where uh, marching dimes, to raise money for the marching dimes, where they passed out uh, these plastic crutches to people who donated. They basically blocked the street and wouldn't let you pass until you donated. 52 Main Street. Highway 52. Yeah. Yep. Five hours, and this is in January, yeah. when it was cold. And of course, I can't exactly say Lake City's hero, but the Lake City area produced Don Button. I don't know if, is he the only professional ball no, player we had? No, we yeah. had two or three. Uh -oh. And the Chroma boys. Yeah. Yes. 
Here we are not a group of baseball players. Okay. Mr. T. Moore, would you want Yeah. Learn something all the time. Now, I got to tell you, Miss Ethel Trillard was one of my favorites. But I, I, I'm glad I didn't have the TV history course. It says she taught social studies. I thought it was history. But, you know. And Miss Nancy Cockle, Cockle in high school teaching science through TV. I don't think that program lasted very long. But then I went around the next year, so I don't know if they continue to do that. We're back to the community college, and they had 280 enrolled. You can tell them that the teachers are not doing this for the money. Yeah, they're $2 a year. 90 courses, two one hour classes each night. On Thursdays, that's a lot of people in this community at the time. No home for no exams. Trying to walk the bar and make sure people come. No great. That's right. Now, this is Sunnyback. For those of you who know it, Sunnyback was one of those kind of natural athletes. Uh, he is actually a class behind us, I think. So he is right forward, 64, 1960. Yeah. And uh, we put it up there more because, you know, he is, he was just kind of a uh, one of those star athletes during that time that uh, just stood out. You can see 17 points average. And you get missed with Sam, I mean, Sonny, Sonny Mac doing that down. Yeah. Of course, it also mentions his brother Johnny, yeah. Johnny Mac, who was also a lot smaller than him, but just as good. Okay. Jay Whitehead. Future Business Executive Contest. Um, got to go to Washington to represent us. That's a good looking picture. He, his hair doesn't look that good now, does it? <laughs> and TV Conference Basketball. The boys. He's right forward. He's here. Days of glory, Randy. All right. Chroma. And he played with Roy Palmer, Jerry Cooper, Russell Turner, uh, Lily Dennis, Wilson Moore, Roger Burris, Lon Browder, Sonny Mack, and Johnny Mack. And the girls. And the girls. Let's see. Do we have anybody here uh, on that team? Of course, my classmates like Iris Lynn and uh, Patsy Webster and uh, Sandra Wise, you know, were there, there to play. And remember, it was half court. Half court. So you had two sets, uh, a set of forwards and a set of uh, guards. No, we've got guards and forwards. It's only five. We had three on the position. Side. Yeah. This was an interesting one. Uh, not, not necessarily Lady City. This is a lady from around here who was a coach of uh, Johnsonville girls team. So at the game, I guess the excitement got too much and she dropped dead right in the game. 33 years old. 33. Wow. Her son just passed away. Huh? Her son just passed away. Oh, is that right? Cub Scouts were a big deal at that at that point. Uh, you can see that they did it in the Methodist Church. R.K. Brown is the Cub Master, and uh, you got 
all kinds of names we know, like Ed Henry, Reggie Blasington, uh, Eddie's father, Mark Epps, was the assistant cup master. Um, we had um, Alvin Welch, we had um, Thad Henna, and let's see, um, Race of Harry. Harry Ashkins was in that crowd. It wasn't he. Once again, we do the science fair. Seventh grade winner, open pit mind. You know, I wonder what they would think. Randy Thomas, an assembly of wireless broadcaster, caster, amplifier. Alan Timmons and Rocky Stewart Soul Conservation Soul Mission. Eddie. <laughs> <And> Andy. What? That was a lot of money. Sadly, uh, the Wicked King got shot. Science of that tells. Don't know what it is. In life. What is this? Is that what that is? Fingerprinting? It's fingerprinting. It can't go show. Remember, her dad did go show. It's because it makes sense. I don't know if I get a sinking cell. That seems like an easy one. <laughs> and Don Rogers, the heart, Marie Matthews, the decimal process, and Martha Phipps, the ear. And the overpass. This is the year of the overpass is being built. Bypassing Lake City. Gone, I guess, will be the days when traffic is jammed up Main Street, Church Street, every other street down during the summertime. People trying to get to the market, trying to get to the beach. Here's the baseball team. Coach Rollins, obviously. But Left to right is Jimmy Kirby, Dick Brown, Johnny Mack, then Randy Floyd once again. All right. With Jerry Cooper, J.P. Broad, Roy Palmer, Wayne McCutcheon, and Bruce Kenny. What was the record, Rand? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them. And the hospital is closed. But he remained, he keeps his uh, practice in the hospital building. I right, he kept it quite a long time, 27 years after he closed the hospital. And this is when we began looking to open the new hospital. Now, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing I want to hear. They use this. Um, I don't know what the terminology is, but it's one of those special business zones that requires people to vote on it, to create it, which means that there are some issues about the building now because we have to vote, somebody has to vote on what they do with it. So it's not just a management or a board that gets to decide on what happens to the property. Council minutes, an interesting year. They created an industrial planning and development board. And as you'll see later on, they added Harry Biebergall. Do y'all remember Mr. Biebergall? He was a delight. He and my father debated Bible all the time. He ran the haberdashery. He'd go to the barber shop. They talked for hours. In uh, May, the motion was made basically to allow the movie theater to open on Sunday. After 2 o'clock. After 2 o'clock and before, after 12 by 5. 
That was proposed. It says everybody approved on it except Ed Roper. Now, whether he wasn't there and didn't vote or just chose to abstain. But then they come back in July. I guess they heard from their constituents because they said you can't do it. So we never got Sunday afternoon movies in Lake City. And we got right away to, I believe it's called Ebb Street, which is uh, right there between John Street and Lee Street, where uh, there's some doctor's offices on there and the office on the corner. Behind Joe Richardson's place. Yep. Last time I was paid. <laughs> That's right. Robert, last time I was paid. <laughs> Last time it was paid. <laughs> You're probably right. Okay. And this is when uh, our Whitlock, the city attorney, uh, announced that there would be a new post office. John McMillan, uh, our congressman, said we'd get it in 1962. Turned out to be a man of his word. I have to say, John L. McMillan is special to me because he's the one that gave me my appointment to West Point. He was considered to be the mayor of Washington at that point. That was when Congress ran the District of Columbia. And he was, in fact, in charge of it. What a stellar looking group of people. This is the class of 1959. It looks like a lot, but I think we graduated 72 or some number. 76, but you're, you're including those that joined our yeah. class only for the graduation, right? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I'm not going to read all the names, but it is quite a crew. Yeah, I'm, I've got to admit, we've lost way too many of these people. So many. But there are quite a few of us left, and I'm really grateful for that. I think LaRue Gray was in several people's class, right? He graduated with us. LaRue was a unique person. Sometimes, sometimes we ought to have a seminar just on the unique from Lake City. Lake City's had tons of really bright, really interesting people. And some of them are just more interesting than others. Who was Bob Hutchison? Who was Bob Hutchison? There he is. Yeah. Now, it's interesting to me, Porky McCoy, I just learned this. All right, Porky is a nickname. How did he get in the yearbook with his nickname? He told me when he went across the uh, stage to get his diploma that principal was J.M. Bushart, and Bushart couldn't say his name. His name is Isley David. And it was such an unusual name that Mr. Bushart stumbled all over to his classmates, he's still Porky. To the rest of the world, he's David. And unfortunately, we just lost Sandra Wise. Okay. And this we're back. Line, I apologize. I used this slide last time and found out it belonged to 1959. Oh, okay. And these well, guys won. 
I was thinking Randy went in that crowd. Was in that crowd, apparently not. The year after. The year after? Right, okay. Okay. They went to Texarkana, Texas, Roswell, New Mexico, El Paso, Texas, and New Orleans. Sounds like a great trip. Marion Anderson was Miss Lacey, 1959-1960. You see the picture, Lynn Ann Trula was runner-up, and Dean Osborne was third place. This is in, in June. We had quite a few other people in our class that were uh, in the court, so to speak. And the pool is opening again this summer. I, I tell you, for us, the pool was the center of life in the summer. At least it was for me. I mean, I spent most of my time there. It was a wonderful place. Mr. Dickert was our science teacher in high school. And he stayed and ran it rather than summer school, I guess. Now, this, the pool, I was interested in this last piece where it says it was first organized in 1935. That property, uh, they tried to, uh, they proposed to put housing on it a couple of years, a few years back. They couldn't because it's restricted. It can only be used for recreation, for food. It's part of the original deal. Julian Singletary came home from uh, Wesleyan College and organized tennis for girls in, in the community that summer. What do you go to? It's a bunch. Yeah. It's sad that it's tennis, but just the uh, uh, recreation for a good old guy. Well, Baptist Church sent off a bunch of boys to RA camp, as they call it. At this point, it's North Greenville uh, Community College. And once again, we see Kent was in that crowd. Oh, Mama got relief for a week. Yeah, Harry was there. Harry and Townage. Goodness me. Yeah, a bunch. Okay. And the Winn Dixie moved from 133 West Main. I mean, it moved East Main. I, I did. I did it really messed up. Um, I worked at the Winn Dixie when it was down uh, where on Main Street, where the um, fitness center is now. Those two pieces of property were the Winn Dixie store until they moved it. And this is the data drop. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is not the picture. It's not the picture of the Winn Dixie or that city. The guy just used that. Right. Now, this was on where the TV bank is currently. Right. Where was that? 1959. This, this is where the, where the, uh, the TV oh, bank is. Chalk was born right that TV bank. Chalk was born for the TV bank. Okay. And did this replace the house? The house was there? The house was moved on Lee Street. On Lee Street. Ah, okay. So the home was moved to Lee Street so that this property. Well, <laughs> and I got to tell you, as of July 7th, Lake City did not exist. If you've never been to a military school, been a plea at one of those institutions, the only thing you think about is survival. So I completely forgot where I was from. Anything, the history of Lake City ended 
when I went to school until I got back some years ago. He was the first one to graduate. Now, he was the second cadet. Second to go. Second to go. Second first to graduate. And then the third one was Jake uh, the Parker. Yeah. And then the uh, fourth one I mean, was Jake Cook. Jake Cook. So we had four. We got the West Point. this year, Reverend Gannon. You can see he came from Madison, Florida. Uh, he replaced Reverend Boyd, who went to Virginia. Yeah. He had a boy named Smokey Joe. <laughs> Smokey Joe was in trouble all the time. Okay, this is the football team, 1559. This team won the conference title. I can't remember, I believe they were undefeated. I'm not sure, but I believe that's Randy true. Table. Is Randy there? No, he was at one time. Hey, that's him, 41, isn't it? 41, yeah. Yeah, look at that. 41, what's that happen? Where did come in? Pardon? What position was the 41? It was an E. In the place you could fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, Miss Rabbit. Woman, the teacher of the year for, uh, for South Carolina. South, South Carolina. <laughs> she should have won it for the nation, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Miss Rabbit. To me, was a wonderful teacher, and when I got uh, the appointment to West Point, I knew that I was going to be in trouble academically because we only went through geometry, algebra, and geometry. And so I went to her house every afternoon for about three months for tutoring in order to uh, catch up and be prepared when I got there. She never charged me a penny. She did it for free. I mean, she was a wonderful, wonderful person. But I do have to tell you, I still got there, and everything I learned, they assumed you knew. <laughs> and they started right into calculus, which I had no idea what it was. I couldn't have spelled it. But Miss Bradley, I'm not sure how long she talked, but I think almost all of her students were tell you. I think she was a lovely lady. Raising money for new uniforms, the Lord knows that they need them. Get rid of those wool things. I don't know what they bought in place. No, replace them. Yeah, replace the, some the of wool. Them. Some of them. Oh. Like some Just of the one I was. And I can, I can remember being in land and having to sell those doggone donuts. Donuts <laughs> 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 every Friday. <laughs> but mom would, mom would take them. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, and this is talking about the Dixon Raiders. Basically, it's all the players except the starters who formed a team to compete and uh, with the starting lineup to get them ready for the football game. So sophomores and juniors uh, taking on uh, the, the first string. Butch. Peter Pollock. Mm -hmm. Butch Floyd. Richard Harrington. Joe Dixon. Arthur Parker. Tony Dixon. Yep. Mason Trudeau. Teddy White. Dave Tanner. Adam Hunt. Harrell Taylor. Corey Ward. Peter Wise. Wise. <laughs> <laughs> Ring 
afraid of them. So go to the bank. Must have worked. So they must be. Yeah. And Lake City had four merit finalists, uh, National Merit Scholarship finalists that year. Captain Gary, Elizabeth Thompson, Rob, Bobby Askins, and then Tommy. The statistics are stunning. Six tenths of one percent of the seniors in this state are selected. Boy, that's a small number. And this is the year the Pentecostal Church began building out on Highway 52. If you remember, they moved, I believe they moved that church from uh, Church Street at that time. Parking. Parking's back. As always and ever. But here, they're doing off street parking. This is where they're going behind what was then DC Moore you know, in order to build a parking lot back there so that uh, avoid some street congestion. It's interesting, they were willing to take any, uh, any place that would offer property for parking lots and they would pay up to $8 per parking space. But the minimum was 25 I don't know where they were thinking they might find more property at that time. But. And Moody Teddy on Clark. Yep. I, yeah, he, he granted an easement. Jack yeah. Phillip uh, granted an easement for the alley. Not all of that was true of property back there, but a good part of it was. Okay. And the project, the housing project kind of gets going. Notice that they just, they separated the white and the, uh, and the black housing project. Um, I, I'm surprised the, each building contained one, two, five bedrooms. I mean, they must have had some pretty big units uh, at that time. Um, the uh, 70, Four for the blacks, 30 for the whites. Um, and I really don't know where these uh, went. I, I don't know the history of the housing project. But that's 100 units. And Lake City would have been one of the very first communities in South Carolina that actually was able to obtain federal housing. This is the Calvary Baptist. So they're building an addition to their church. This is the building on Carlisle Street. And C.J. Evans is building it. Yeah, um, I can't read what it says, but um, Lake City, uh, the uh, Lions Club raised $5,000 to help the new university in Eastern Carolina at Florence. I remember um, when I graduated, that was an option for going to school. But at that time, they held classes in the old post office uh, building in Florence. So. And Lake City, uh, Pound the Bank moves. It's got a couple of pictures. The one on the bottom uh, right, the picture of the old bank, uh, bank was uh, a bank from the 30s. Um, it, until the 50s, I'm not exactly sure what year, uh, uh, in the 57, 58 time frame, um, that was actually the state bank. Yeah. I mean, it was my bank. Yeah. Can't do the bank. No, before that. Before that. When they moved to the corner, 
other bank took it over. Sorry, I do know that. Okay. Okay. It's dark. I see it's white too. This one. And this is when the football team gets honored because it won the conference championship. Randy, what? What did y'all get? Y'all get a little, a little football. A little tiny silver <laughs> football. <laughs> Still at it? Sure do. Oh! Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we still haven't resolved the question. <laughs> okay. It keeps well, insisting, but it's not. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming tonight. We will be moving on to 1960 for our next presentation on March 28th. Hope to see you then.